Well, it's time now for the press review, and for that, I'm joined in the studio by Erin Agunke. Hi, Erin. Hi, Hexie. Now, there were um, numerous protests in support of Palestinians uh, worldwide over the weekend. Uh, what do the papers you've been looking at have to say about those? Well, it's the cover of several French papers this morning. Uh, French paper La Croix here uh, headlines today uh, on the, quote, anger of the Arab world. Uh, the paper tells us that the war in Gaza uh, has provoked intense emotions in places like Egypt, Tunisia, Lebanon, and Morocco. Now, the case of Egypt, the paper points out is interesting because the population is massively opposed uh, to forcibly uh, relocating Gazans to the neighboring Sinai Peninsula, as has been suggested by some uh, Israeli officials. People quoted in the piece say that it would amount to the liquidation, essentially, of the Palestinian cause. Uh, an editorial in The Guardian, uh, meanwhile, takes a look specifically See if I can get this uh, to be bigger. Takes a look specifically at the protests in the Arab world and says that they're less about the Palestinian cause and more about their own domestic situations in many of these nations. The editorialist war war says that people uh, are angry both at the lack of regional solidarity between numerous uh, countries that have chosen to pursue self interest rather than pan-Arabism, uh, but more importantly, their anger about the lack of democracy. And in this sense, she says that the shrunken space for civic protests and expression uh, renders Palestinian demonstrations a sanctioned space for channeling frustration. So essentially saying that because protest is typically repressed in these nations, the Palestinian cause is the only way for them to protest uh, in general. Now, the protests also made the front page of the French paper Humanité this morning, uh, the People's Awakening, they call it, from Washington. Washington to London, San Sebastian, Spain to Marseille here in France. Uh, the paper focused on the hundreds of thousands of peaceful protesters uh, marking the awakening of Western public opinion specifically, according to this left-leaning paper. The editorial insists that uh, demanding an end to the, quote, blind pillaging of Gaza does not in any way excuse the horrors perpetrated uh, by Hamas on October 7th. And the editorialist really makes a point of saying that to link the two ideas uh, is, quote, an insult to the most basic form uh, of humanism. And Erin, speaking of Europe, uh, many people uh, across Europe worried about uh, how the conflict is likely to deepen pre-existing divisions in European societies. Yeah, and in several places, the Financial Times did an interview with the Dutch Justice Minister, uh, who warned that the war could increase security risks in Europe. But she also details how political parties across the continent, including uh, in the Netherlands, have kind of diverged in their responses, and that's had domestic consequences. An MP with the Dutch uh, Green Party, for example, recently had to quit as a candidate for re-election because of her party's uh, response, which initially failed uh, to mention the plight of the Palestinians. Uh, at all, but I think uh, this is, has had the most consequences really here in France. Le Monde today has a piece on the destruction of the French left uh, in the wake of this conflict uh, and how it's affected France unbowed first in the wider Noop alliance, which is, you know, on the verge of, of collapsing, uh, but now specifically within the France, un uh, the France unbowed party, the piece saying that a growing number of party rebels are now openly opposed to party leader Jean-Luc Mélenchon. It's the first time really that we've seen this, and this is all linked to their perceived failure to kind of force fully uh, denounce the actions uh, of Hamas. Now, elsewhere, this division is really playing out at the protests themselves. It's on the front page of the British paper, The Times, this morning. Uh, Braverman takes on Met chief over jihad uh, protests. That's because uh, a cabinet minister accused people at pro-Palestinian rallies in London this weekend of essentially inciting terrorist violence by chanting uh, jihad. Uh, this piece also quotes um, some Jewish Londoners uh, who no longer feel comfortable uh, taking public transport when these types of protests are happening for example, and that's linked to some really uh, controversial, to not say indeed hateful, uh, protest slogans, things like Zionism is the new Nazism and from London to, to Gaza globalize the Intifada. So just another example of how these uh, protests are kind of reigniting domestic divisions across Europe, really. And Erin, let's move away uh, from that conflict now to some other news uh, from Argentina. Uh, elections in Argentina bringing in some rather surprising results, to say the least. What are the papers saying today? Well, the polls ended up being pretty off. Uh, La Nation, the Argentine uh, paper, tells us that the next president of Argentina will be one of these two men. Uh, that's current economy minister and center-left candidate Sergio Massa on the left, and then far-right ultra-liberal candidate Javier Millet on the right, who was widely expected to come uh, in first place. Now, Clarín, uh, the Argentine paper, tells us uh, that with a six-point lead, uh, Sergio, Ma Sergio Massa is, is indeed comfortably ahead of Millet, though he's likely to get center-right 
uh, Patricia Brillich's support. Now, an editorial in Clarion this morning argues that Massa then is likely in the coming months to focus his rhetoric on national unity, uh, kind of express more centrist views uh, in the campaigning ahead of the second round of voting, which is set uh, for November the 18th. Meanwhile, elections in Switzerland also bringing in some rather surprising results, Erin. Yeah, uh, that is on the paper of the Swiss paper Le Temps this morning. In Sunday's legislative election, the far-right uh, populist Swiss People's Party, uh, quote, broke the green wave of 2019, according to Le Temps. Uh, that's because the Greens and their allies only got two-thirds of the support that they got in 2019, the last legislative elections. This piece argues that the head of the far-right, Marco Chiesa, was successful uh, thanks to uh, his predecessor kind of old recipes of denouncing immigration, opposing arrogant silly dwell dweller, city dwellers and kind of peripheral uh, countryside residents. Now, the cartoon on the front page here, I think, really <laughs> sums that up well. Uh, by Chapat, you've got uh, these ones on the left of the Green Party offering a vegan inclusive menu at their restaurant. And then uh, the far right Swiss uh, People's Party offers traditional Swiss meals alongside foreigners out. So just kind of the same, same discourse working as embodied uh, in a restaurant. And Erin, you're finishing with some uh, revelations that some of the world's most uh, well-known celebrities had double lives. Yeah, Haxi, and I'm actually not talking about their romantic lives. Many of them actually have worked as spies, according to the Washington Post. Now, the piece profiles people like Josephine Baker, who is the American-born French uh, cabaret singer who, of course, worked for the French Resistance. Uh, because of her fame, it says that German men, and despite her being black, uh, would swoon over her, sometimes even divulge military secrets after drinking too much. Talks about a lot of other people who did similar things. Cary Grant, uh, chef Julia Childs. Uh, it says that many of the celebrities were really looking for a way to kind of show their patriotism and get involved at a time of international crisis, uh, mostly during the Second World War. Fascinating stuff. Erin Gunke with a look for the day's uh, papers. Thank you very much indeed.